Hi, my name is Jessica and I'm a librarian from the Fresno County Public Library and I'm here to welcome you to the Digital Summer at Your Library program. We wanted to take this time to remind everyone to make sure you visit our summer webpage at www.fresnolibrary.org summer. You can find more information on all the fun stuff offered, including take and make crafts for teens, fun digital programs for teens, kids, and adults, and even reading programs for all ages, and you can win prizes. So swing by fresnolibrary.org slash summer for all the information and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Belly Dance Workout. I've been part of the Fresno Belly Dance community as a performer, instructor, choreographer, and director for over 20 years. And I'm really excited to be able to work with the library and put this program together. Middle Eastern dance is a beautiful and expressive dance form. It also happens to be a really good workout. As you might guess from the name belly dance, we do use our core muscles quite a bit. We actually use our whole body and you're going to get a really good workout. The term belly dance actually is kind of an umbrella term uh, covering all the associated dance forms. Uh, it is originally a Middle Eastern dance form and over the years things have been hybridized into it. But uh, ever since the World's Fair in 1894, quite some time ago, the term belly dance has been used. The promoter used that word to draw more audiences to the ethnic dance shows. People just didn't know what it was, so they weren't really checking it out. Um, and so as you might guess, the term belly dance to the Victorian audiences was quite intriguing and scandalizing. So currently there's some discussion about being a bit more inclusive with the terminology, acknowledging source culture, and so there's some different terms being used in the dance community. Uh, there's the acronym MENOT, which is Middle Eastern, North African, Hellenistic, and Turkish, a bit more inclusive of the different ethnic dance forms that are in this. Also, uh, more recently, the term SWANA, which is an acronym for Southwest Asian North African, which is a bit more geographically accurate. Um, the terms of Eastern and Western, of course, uh, started with ancient Rome. Rome was the center of the world, and so everything east of Rome was Eastern, everything west of Rome was Western, but they're not the center of the world anymore. And so there's discussion about terminology and, and geography and things like that. But I'm using the term belly dance uh, as an umbrella term for all of the related styles, fusion styles, American styles, all that sort of thing. But it is very important to acknowledge the source cultures. Um, in this workout, um, I'm going to be teaching belly dance moves but I can't really teach belly dance technique because I can't see you. I cannot make corrections while we're dancing. So um, I'm gonna focus on the feel of the moves, the quality of the moves, and of course, the muscles that they're gonna be working out. We're definitely going to be getting a workout. It's also going to be fun and expressive and um, 
I just want you to remember that you live in your body, you know what you are feeling good with. So if you need to modify, that's fantastic. Do what you need to do. If you need to slow things down a little bit, or if you need to just take a step back and just uh, do the home step that I'll be showing in a moment, that's all fine. We're gonna be starting out in program one at more of a beginning level, and as we move through program two and three, we will be adding more in, moving towards a more intermediate level. Um, but basically, keep moving and have fun, feel strong and beautiful while we dance to this wonderful music. We have music from Solace and from Jim Karagosian, and also the uh, our shimmy challenge will be music from the Ready Set Drum CD produced by Andalee and Mike Owens and Clovis uh, from their Hot Rocks uh, event with uh, Faisal Zendam on the solo album. And so I just have to say the Solace CD, the first CD that I came into contact with, the Shawaza CD, is the whole reason I even started belly dancing. I just love the music so much. I had to learn how to move to it. And so um, I wanted to make sure that we had that music. Too. So I hope you enjoy dancing to all this just as much as I do. And so let's get started. Before we get started, I'd like to talk a little bit about what you'll need for the class today. First of all, you're going to need some space to dance in. My space here in my home dance room is about five feet by eight feet. So something like that will probably be fine. Uh, just make sure you don't have any stuff in the way. And also a ceiling fan overhead is probably not a good thing for you. Um, we're going to be using some veils and you don't want to get tangled up. If you can't set up any other place other than under a ceiling fan, just have it off just to avoid any entanglements. Um, and then set up another fan somewhere else if you feel that you need one. So speaking of veils, if you have a standard belly dance veil, whether rectangular or half circle, that's um, what we'll be using for the most part. I'm gonna be using a, a half circle one because my space is not super big. So if you have one, that's great. If you don't, you can use a scarf that is lightweight, something like that is fine. As long as it's not super heavy and long enough that you can have your arms about that far apart. So that will work just fine. You know, and in a pinch, you could even use a curtain shear. Just make sure it's not so wide that you're going to step on it, but totally would work just as long as it's long enough or wide enough to um, have your arms about that far apart. You will also need a yoga mat when we do the floor work. If you are not able to get to the floor easily, we'll be having some modifications in the chair. You can also have a chair handy for balance if you think that you'll need it. That's fine. I just have my regular kitchen chair here, nothing special, but it does not have wheels and it does not swivel. So that's an important thing. You want it to be stable. When we're doing the modifications of the floor exercises, you will be putting your body weight on it. So make sure that it's stable and sturdy. Okay, time to dance. Let's check in with our posture. Have your weight centered over your feet. And a good way to check that is to just pick your toes up and that will force your weight to be in the middle of your foot. And then you can put your toes back down and soften your knees. You're gonna wanna have your tailbone reaching towards the floor, almost as if there's a little weight attached to it. This is gonna open up your lower back and relax it. Then we will roll our shoulders around and down and back and feel those shoulder blades dropping down into the back pocket of your jeans. 
And then we'll zip our jeans up in front and engage our abdominals. And this is going to be a continuous zipping up process. It's not a one and done thing. And then your chest will lift towards the ceiling with the string traveling diagonally. And then there's also a string coming out the top of your head and reaching for the ceiling straight up into the sky, lengthening your spine. Your head is balanced over your rib cage, which is balanced over your pelvis, which is balanced over your feet. Everything on the back is traveling down and everything on the front is traveling up. And your weight is centered over both your feet and this circle of going up and going down travels around your body. Let's go over the basic footwork for our workout today. We're going to start with our home step, which is a step touch. So I'm transferring weight to one foot and touching with the unweighted foot. I'm not stepping out super far, keeping it kind of underneath my hips, but I'm stepping and touching. And this is the basis for movements like hip twist, where the hip twists forward and up, and the standing leg softens to accommodate the movement. So step and touch and step and touch. We'll also be doing a side to side. So I'm going to step out and close and out and touch. Side, close, side, touch. One, two, three, four. And this can be layered with a hip circle and a half, traveling that side to side, layered on top of the footwork. We'll also use a double side to side, and this is the same thing, just in eight counts instead of four. And then it touches to change direction. And side, close, side, touch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, touch. This is layered with um, hip locks, and also if you angle it, the traveling undulation. So same footwork, just a slightly different angle. The different footwork you just saw there is a two-step, and so it's just one foot in front of the other, kind of like a ballet third position, and the weight commits to the front foot and then shifts to the back foot. And this is used a lot with undulations, whether traveling or even in place, just to get a little extra movement. Make sure you return back to your neutral posture whenever you are through with the body wave movement. We'll also be using a forward and back step. So one foot takes weight and travels forward and back and the other one stays in place and marks the spot. So it travels forward and back and one, two, three, four, forward and back and and it can be layered with hip locks among other things and it can be done flat footed or on releve and finally we will be using an arabesque pose and this is where the front foot commits to the weight and that leaves the back leg free to extend and then the opposite arm also extends to create a nice long line from fingertip to toe tip and we will be using this position in our veil flow. Taking some deep breaths, raise your arms up, inhale, and exhale as you come down, a big stretch throughout your shoulders and torso, inhale and exhale. And now shoulder circles going to the back and let's also soften our knees and get a little stretch in the Achilles tendon. And then change direction forward with the shoulders and again a plie. 
stretch your ankles and coming back up. We'll bring our head from the side down and to the side, doing a crescent to warm our neck up. And then sinking into one hip and stretching up with the opposite arm and that foot slightly forward to help with balance. Really feel the long reach through your torso and your side. Reaching for the ceiling. And then rotate your ankles, get them nice and warmed up, making circles around. and some horizontal hip circles, keeping your pelvis level all the way around. Don't let your tailbone come up when you're going across the back. Engage your abs to keep it level. And then one last big arm circle. Working with our veil now and keeping a little bit of tension in the top edge, we're going to lunge from side to side with an arabesque leg and twist through the waist and just flow the veil horizontally from side to side. Remember to breathe while you're doing this. Nice horizontal curves around yourself. Breathe through the leg. And now we're going to flip the veil up to the side, so we're doing side lunges and a nice reach up towards the ceiling, flicking the veil fabric, making a nice loop. And now we're doing some beach towel shakes and shaking that sand off the beach towel, getting some nice height, two on each side, and then switch through a plie. And now around the world on the side, back, and side, and front, really stretching through your torso and arm. And smooth it out and start getting a little bit of a veil swirl going on there around the world. And changing direction, side, back, side, and front. A little plie as you come through the front. Reach and stretch and point your toes on the non-weighted leg. And around you go, and back to the side swoops, twisting through the waist, plie as you shift your weight, and now flicking up towards the ceiling, reach up, feel the stretch in your arm, taking some deep breath, getting some height on the veil, and then going into the towel flicks, getting all that beach sand off the towel, get some height, then reach your arms up. going into around the world, feeling that stretch through your torso, reaching up and around, swirling that veil fabric. And changing directions back and around the world. Nice stretch and nice veil flow. And we'll repeat again with our side swoops going through our arabesque lunge, side to side, and then flips up towards the ceiling, getting some height on the veil and really stretching through the side of the body. And then our towel flips, reaching up, getting some height, and around the world going through the side and back and side and front and switching directions and finishing. Starting with your feet underneath your hips, we are going to do some level hip slides. Keeping your pelvis as level as possible, just move side to side, feeling a stretch in your oblique on one side and a contraction on the other. This is almost like somebody is pulling on your hips with a string side to side, keeping your chest lifted. And 
slide and slide and slide. Now keeping your weight center, we're going to tilt our pelvis one side up, one side down, kind of like a steering wheel going up and down. One knee is going to straighten slightly as the hip goes up and the other one will bend slightly as the hip goes down. The hip going up, you'll contract that glute and relax the other side. You're going to squeeze, 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 squeeze. Nice big circle with the arms. Don't forget to breathe. Reaching out, keeping that chest lifted and keeping those hips moving, contracting those glutes. Now just on one side. I've got my weight on the back foot. The hip that's working, that foot is up on releve. So I'm contracting on the one side and then releasing it back down. My standing knee is soft to accommodate the downward movement of the hip on the weighted side. So bump, 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 contract, 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 contract. Keeping the chest lifted and allowing that standing leg to bend. And switching sides. Now the other hip is going up and then back down. Contract that glute and the oblique and then bring it back down. And bump, and bump, and bump, and bump. Up, down, up, down. Letting that standing leg be soft. And bump, 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 up, 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 up. Now we're sliding the chest side to side, keeping your lower body still as much as possible. Keep the chest lifted and feel those side muscles working. Now we're lifting our chest up, contracting the muscles that are between and below our shoulder blades, but not pulling our shoulder blades together. We're dropping them down into our back pocket of our jeans and lift and drop down to level. Lift and slide. We're doing crescents now, side, Size. Don't drop below your starting point. We're simply sliding and lifting up to the side. Feel those muscles in your back working. Make sure that you're keeping your tailbone down and your pelvis level. Now we're doing reverse figure eights that go up, out, down, and center. Up, out, down, and center. Keeping it flat like you're a piece of bread in a toaster. Going up, out, down, nice and smooth, a slight weight shift, but really working on expanding that oblique muscle and pulling it down. Now we'll scoop up. It's still an infinity sign, you're still flat in your toaster, but now we're going down, out, up, and pull in with that oblique. Pull in, down, out, up, in, down, out, up, in, and scoop, and scoop keeping the chest lifted and the tailbone down, soft knees to accommodate the movement. Now we'll lift our chest, tilt back, roll our spine down a wall behind us, and when we arrive at the bottom, that tailbone points back down at the floor. So this is our undulation. Lift, tilt back, roll down, and release. Up, back, down, release. And one foot in front of the other, for our two-step position, or you can have your feet parallel. Now a level hip circle. This is a horizontal hip circle. Keeping that tailbone down as you come around the back, pull up on your abs, keep it level. The feet are close together underneath the hips. And now a little bit of a shoulder lock. Our shoulder blades are moving back and forth on the rib cage. I am not twisting in my waist. A little bit faster, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Starting with some figure eight and just some wrist circles and expressive arms, just feeling the music. Swaying back and forth.
start with some hip locks at half time. Lock, two, three, four, step, touch, step, hip twist. Lock, two, three, four, step, twist, step, twist. Full time on the locks. Five, six, seven, eight, step, twist, step, twist. Lock, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, step, twist, step, twist. Cross, step, step, touch, shoulder shimmies, and hip bumps. Up, 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 up. Cross, step, step, touch, shoulder shimmy, and hip bumps. Let that standing leg bend and squeeze those glutes. And coming back to center, we're going to step to the side with this double side to side at half time. And step touch, shoulder rolls, a little plie, and then a shoulder shimmy. And back the other way. Locking up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, touch, shoulder rolls, and shoulder shimmy. Now we're gonna go full time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, touch, roll, and shimmy. Other way, one, two, three, four, five, six, step, touch, roll, and shoulder shimmy. Step, and step, touch, shoulder shimmy, and hip bumps. And cross, step, step, touch, shoulder shimmy, and hip bumps. Turning back to center, and we're going to do locks at full time and our hip twist at full time. Step, twist, step, twist, five, six, seven, eight. Lock, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Step, twist, step, twist, step, twist, step, twist. Locks with a plie, five, six, seven, eight, and step, twist. And again, the plie and step, twist, step, twist, and finish. Starting with your feet underneath your hips, we're going to start with some level hip slides. Bringing them out, out, staying flat like you're in a coaster and you're touching the sides of the doorway with your hips. Remember to keep your chest lifted. Sliding out to the side. And now a little shoulder roll with a plie. And we're just feeling the music here. And now we're going to do a double side to side with some locks and some shoulder shimmies forward and back. Going the other way, lock, two, three, and touch, and shoulder shimmies forward and back. Come back the other way, lock, 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 touch, shoulder shimmies. Just a little bit of a weight shift to keep your chest lifted still. Lock, two, three, four, five, six, step, touch, and now we're going to go forward and back, and back, and forward, and close, forward, and back, and forward, and close. Other side, we're doing hip locks every time one of your feet strikes the ground. And forward, and back, and forward, and close. And now some chest crescents, sliding and lifting to each side. Doing some quick ones now. Don't drop below your original starting point though. And hip circle, keeping it level. And back the other way. Keep that tailbone dropped down. Forward and back. And forward and close. Hip locks. Back and forward and close. Again, two, three, four, forward and close. Switch sides. Forward and back and forward and close. And some chest crescents, and I slide side to side and lifting up at the corners. And faster, double time. 
using those muscles in your back. Hip circle and then back the other way, unwind. Now feeling the music with some figure eights, up, out, down, up, out, down. Soft arms following the movement of the hips. Keeping that pelvis level. And forward and back with an undulation. Lift, tilt back, roll down and drop that tailbone. Lift, tilt, roll down. And now we're gonna sh shift to the other side. The other foot's in front now. Lift, roll down, drop that tailbone. Lift, roll down. And now some scoop figure eight. Feeling the music and just scooping. Pulling that oblique muscle in and shifting your weight. And a couple undulations back. And forward and back and forward and close. Switch sides, hip locks, forward and back and close. And again, forward and back, forward and close. Hip locks, back and forward and close. And our chest crescents. Slow and then quick. Making sure you keep your tailbone down for the hip circles. Pull those abs in as you swing around. And some shoulder rolls with a plie. And back to our hip slides. Don't let your pelvis tilt. We're going side to side like we're inside a toaster making it smaller. And going in for the finish. It's time for our shimmy challenge. We're going to shimmy through the entire song. So starting with some soft locks, a little bit of a squeeze on each glute as it moves upwards and your knees are pumping and now we're going to go full time so we're bending and straightening our knees ever so slightly your heels can come up from the floor if they need to but make sure that your weight is centered and that your tailbone is dropped down and your chest is lifted keep those hips moving up and down and we're going to move our arms expressively. You can move your shoulders if you like, but we're going to keep that shimmy going, keeping that pelvis level, the tailbone dropped, the abs pulled up, and the chest open, and the head balanced above everything else. Keep it going. Don't forget to breathe. Getting a little chest movement in there if you feel like it. And finish. Raising your arms up overhead as you inhale. Clasp your hands together and expand one side of your body as you tilt away from it. Opening up all those muscles. Soften your knees. Come back up to center. Exhale as you go to the side, stretching out that side. Same thing, but now in a circle. We're going to tilt and round our back, keeping our tailbone pointed down and rounding around to the other side. Come up through a flat shape and up to the top. Back the other way, we're going to tilt and then round, coming around, tailbone down, and to the side, and up, back to the center. From here, drop your chin and curl down, soften your knees, rounding your back down, curling up until you're like a little prawn, hanging from your hips. And then tuck and roll up, restacking your vertebrae, engaging your abdominals, engaging your glutes, restacking everything, and open your chest. Give yourself a hug 
and lower your chin. Feel your upper back opening up. And now a lunge, pressing that back heel into the floor. Your weight is evenly centered. Squeeze your glute. Feel that front of your hip opening. Clasp behind and open your chest. Soften your back knee. Stretch that Achilles tendon. Now shift your weight back and pull your front toes up and reach for them, feeling that stretch in your hamstring. Relax into that. And then coming back up, we'll switch sides and the other leg is back. Pressing that heel into the floor, squeezing that glute, opening up the hip in the front. Clasp the hands behind. Weight is evenly centered as you open your chest. Soften that back knee for an extra stretch to your Achilles tendon. Shift your weight back, pull your front toes up, and reach down for them, stretching that hamstring, your back knee being soft. Coming back up. Second position plie with your hands on your knees, and we'll twist through the waist, looking over our shoulder feeling a stretch through our spine, and then switch sides, looking over the other shoulder, and coming back up, bring your feet back together, we'll drop our head around and to the side, making a crescent shape, and over to the other side. Big shoulder rolls back, feeling all the movement opening in the front and closing in the back. And giant arm circle, filling your whole space. One more. Make a circle and relax down. Make your way to the floor, and we will start with a cat-cow stretch. So in a quadruped position, you're going to exhale and arch your back up like a Halloween cat, and then exhale and sway your back down like a cow, and your face is forward. And just repeat that at your own speed arching up and swaying down. If you're using a chair, you can put your hands on the chair and do the same thing. When you're arching up, you're gonna to wanna to bend your knees a little bit, and then you can straighten them whenever you sway down into the cow position. You can also do this at the back of the chair if you aren't able to bend over quite that far. Once again, you will bend your knees as you arch up and then straighten them a little bit as you sway back down. And as we finish the cat-cow, we're going to move into some donkey kicks to work our glutes and our hamstrings. And so staying in quadruped, you're gonna raise the sole of your foot up towards the ceiling and then pulse it up three times closer to the ceiling and then switch sides. You wanna keep the movement in your hip as much as possible instead of moving into the spine. With the chair, same thing. You can put your hands on the chair and bring the sole of your foot up towards the ceiling and pulse upwards three times and switch sides. You can hold on to the back of the chair as well. This one, the sole of the foot isn't quite going up to the ceiling because of the angle. It's kind of more where the wall and the ceiling meet, but it's the same movement and keeping it in the hip as much as possible.
And when you have finished the donkey kick, we're just gonna move back into a child's pose, sitting on our feet, relaxing our back down, extending the arm, and feeling a nice stretch through our back. You can hold on to the back of the chair and do a mini squat, keeping your back slightly rounded. You can hold on to the seat of the chair, do the same sort of movement, keeping the head slightly dropped and rounding the back. If you need to sit, you can slide your hands down your shins and round over that way stretching your back. Coming up out of the child's pose, we're going to turn around and lay on our back. And bend your knees and bring your feet kind of close to your bottom. And we're going to be doing a bridge. So you want to pull your belly button towards your spine, squeeze your glutes, and press your heels into the floor, and raise your hips up. And then as you lower down, roll through your spine, vertebrae by vertebrae, starting from the shoulders, rolling down through the spine, your tailbone will be the last thing to touch. If you're doing this in the chair, you can put your hands towards the back of the chair and raise your bottom up off the chair, having a straight line between your shoulders and your knees. Make sure that your feet are on a non-slip surface. You can also hold on to the back of the chair, doing a mini squat, and then as you come up, Squeeze the glutes a little bit and open your chest up towards the ceiling. You don't want to be really pulling on the chair, just using it for balance. Raising your hips up off the floor, a straight line between your shoulders and your knees, and then roll down through the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. So now we're gonna stretch those glute muscles. We're gonna do a figure four stretch and you'll cross your ankle over the opposite knee and reach through and hold on to that knee. And you can stay with your shoulders slightly elevated off the floor a little bit of space between your chin and your chest, like you're holding an orange, or you can lay all the way flat. And then pull the knee across with the opposite hand, get a little extra stretch, and then switch sides. Crossing your ankle over the opposite knee, reaching through, and pulling that knee towards your chest. And then pull across the opposite knee, get a nice extra stretch. In the chair, you'll be doing the same thing, just cross and then lean forward. And then reach across with the opposite hands and give a little extra stretch, pulling on that knee and a slight twist in the waist. and then switch sides. Same thing, cross your ankle over your knee, lean forward, rounded. Feel that nice stretch in your glutes. And then coming up, reaching across with the opposite hand and giving a little extra stretch while twisting through the waist. We're now moving into a single leg hold. So you're going to reach up, pull your knee towards your chest and holding the ankle and extending the opposite leg. 
So the inside ankle, the opposite arm is holding it. You can keep your head up off the mat, keeping space between your chin and chest. You can also lay flat if you need to. This is a little bit like the bicycle exercise, but it's got an extension in the opposite leg. Sitting in the chair, you can do the same thing. Round your back a little bit, pull your belly button in towards your spine, and pick up your knee towards your chest, and extend the opposite leg, and alternate. We're moving now into a dead bug. You can put your hands under your hips and bring your knees to a tabletop position and tap your toes on the mat, alternating feet. Make sure that you're scooping your belly button in towards your spine. You can bring your head up off of the mat, gently holding behind. Don't pull on your neck though, you're just supporting it. Sitting in the chair, you can do the same thing. Scoop the belly button in towards the spine and lift your legs and alternate tapping your toes. Make sure to keep that core strong. You can also put one foot flat and alternate tapping toes that way as well. If you need to have a little bit of a modification, you can do this with your arms extended or holding onto the chair. Coming out of the dead bug, we're going to go into just a long stretch. Really extend your hands and your feet away from each other. Relax down into the floor. And then reach each side, expanding each side, lengthening and alternating, pulling your arm farther away from your foot. You can do the same thing in the chair, sitting on the edge of the chair and reaching or sitting up straight and simply reaching up towards the ceiling with your arm and stretching your side. You can also do this standing and using the chair for balance. So a long stretch through your side, reaching for the ceiling or for the wall behind you. Now roll to your side and then all the way over onto your stomach. And we're gonna go into a Sphinx pose. And so your upper body is raised off the mat and your weight is supported on your forearms. And just pull a little bit forward with your chest by pulling on the floor. You can also do this with the chair, keeping your glutes and your abs nice and strong and engaged and then open your chest up to the ceiling. From here, pull back into quadruped and then extend one leg for a pigeon pose. I'm comfortable having my leg just bent underneath me. Some people like to rotate it out. So whatever works for you, but the back leg is extended and the front of the hip is being stretched. You can get a little extra stretch if you need it, tucking your toes under and extending your leg, straightening your knee. Keeping your chest lifted and your face forward. And then switch sides, extend that leg out. Feel that nice stretch in the front of the hip. Now on a chair, you can Scoot over to the edge so that just one side of your bottom is on the chair and extend that outside leg and get that same stretch in the front of the hip and reach over to the opposite knee with your hand and then hold on to the chair on the side. And then switch sides, scooting over to the other side of the chair, the other edge, 
and extend the outside leg with the opposite hand on the inside knee. Coming out of the pigeon pose, press your toes against the floor to bring your knee in. And we're gonna shift to a cross-legged seated position. And then just lean forward, stretching out the back. And then round, round your back, curve your back over. And then walk your hands over to one side, stretch your side a little bit. After a few counts, bring them back to center and then walk them out to the opposite side and hold that for a few counts. Go at your own pace, whatever is comfortable. And then coming back to center, come up and you will switch feet so that the other leg is in front and you'll do the same thing. Rounding over and then switching your hands side to side. You can do the same thing in the chair. Slide your hands down your shin and round your back over. And then walking your hands to the side for the side stretch. And switching sides. Coming back to center and coming back up. Whenever you have finished, simply turn onto your knees, tuck your toes under, and push your weight onto your feet, and gently come up to a standing position. Thank you for dancing with me. I hope you felt strong and beautiful.